It is. Show us your tips, Dag and Beaver, with you for, well, the carnival's over, Beaver, but um, we've got Newcastle and, and Cranbourne to talk about. Exciting. What's going on, mate? Uh, nothing much, mate. Uh, not exciting as what it looks like for you there, but up on the sunny Gold Coast. Yeah, no, it's uh, not a bad, not a bad view out the back. That is not a fake picture. That is not a fake <laughs> picture. Not a green screen. Daggy. That is that is uh, that is the real McCoy up there on the Gold Coast. Um, uh, hence the sunnies and a, a heavy night from Daggy, but uh, he pushes on. We soldier on. We've got to get. We've been through a couple weeks, so you've got to kick back sometime, I suppose. Uh, how did it all treat you? I haven't spoken to you for a bit. Looks like it treated you well, mate. You're up there uh, spending all your all your winnings. So well uh-huh. done. Um, yeah, not too bad, mate. Uh, Carnival was uh, pretty good. Uh, can't complain too much. And uh, now we get into what looks to be a bit of a tougher, tougher task. But uh, yeah. we're up to it. Here we are, eh? Newcastle. So we're uh, we've got the hunter on tomorrow in Newcastle. Uh, rails in the true. We should get a good track. Weather's good, so all systems go. Look, a generally pretty good track in Newcastle. We do. Sell, yeah, I don't mind it. You sometimes get a bit wary when you get the better quality horses that may be on pace, but. Played all right last year, similar the same card. So we'll see how we go. We kick off with the Max Lee's Classic two-year-old 900 meter race. Anything to start of the day here? Uh, look, mate, pretty tricky um, by all accounts. They're all pretty much uh, first starters, or they are all first starters, except for the the one that's right out of the market. So uh, hard to get a line on here. Um, when the Cummings horses train trial well, um, they're worth following. Uh, so I I went for Cylinder on top. Uh, thought it was a good trial, and maybe his other horses is one of the main dangers uh, for Ghana. Yeah, I, I ended up with Zealander on top. Obviously, nice improvement between trials. J Mac where it goes on uh, and will run well. I thought that um, where is it? Bangetta trialed quite well. Mm. They came to town and trialed for Chris Lee's. Now, obviously, heads home, and you'd think they'd be targeting this race um, named after his old man. So. Uh, I think can run well as well. I thought the, the market suggests that. I think they're the two two main chances for me. The Mile Highway is up next to Class Three. Anything here in the oh, look, field? It's a tricky race, but I think um, Jamari uh, can run another nice race. Its its form doesn't look as good as um, probably how it's been running. It had two nice runs in uh, some highways where it got well back in the field and finished off nicely behind Socrates. And then it was in a good race, uh, won by Waterford last start. I think this is the weakest field it's met for a while. And I think the big open track at Newcastle and the straight, um, can allow it to run home quite well. So I've got it on top. Beauty. Good call there. Uh, the third is a benchmark 78, 1400 meters. Uh, Sabrenko's come out. I've just seen that. Uh, well, two key chances for me. Uh, short, short smashed him last week. I thought it was good. Uh, gets pace favours again here. Quick backup. It's going to roll forward and um, be very hard to beat from French Bond, who was pretty good uh, resuming last time, sitting outside lead. Uh, Mark, again, with the market, but I think short, short's going to be hard to beat. Miss Madison will run well. I thought she tried really hard last week against a, a much better field, and um, a double figures might be the ones for exotics. What do you make of this? I, I had philosophile on top. Um, resuming here, I noticed that Wallace brought it from from Melbourne yeah. to Sydney, um, and it trialled quite well at Randwick. Um, and down in Caulfield, um, Mooney Valley, Flemington, it, it performed really well. It sort of wanted the mile or a little bit further, but I think it can sprint really well here, fresh, um, gets the right draw. And um, I'm interested that Wallace has brought it uh, to the good tracks in Sydney. So um, got it on top, but certainly short shorts. Um, uh, did win well last start, but I thought it was just probably a little bit skinny for me. Cool. I, yeah, I had a feeling I might want a wet track for the last file, which is why I went around it. But, um, yeah, respect what you said there. The Beaufort is up next, race four for the Stayers. I um, I started this race thinking I was going to go looking for Chalkstream, but sort of got smashed in both those last couple of runs and mm-hmm. left me just um, by default with King Frankel on top. I think dry track. Uh, is a key, uh, and there's just a lack of chases here. It's going to roll forward and uh, a bit of a claim, so down in, on the minimum weight, blah, blah, blah. It's going to roll forward. It's had the 2,400-metre run. I think it's going to be very hard to get past, to be honest. Um, what would you make of this? Yeah, I thought probably fairly similar to you there. It seems to be the the horse with with the upside here. Three runs this prep have all been good, gets the lightweight. It's only carrying 50 and a half here with the claim for Schiller. Um 
It's as short as you want it, but uh, looks the most progressive type in this field. You're right, I sort of went looking for chalk stream, but thought the same as you. And then my only other was I thought uh, our candidate could run well. I think yeah. it's been consistent of late. And again, we'll be enjoy the 2300 and maybe the one chasing the hardest at the end. So I sort of have King Frank on top of our candidate. Cool. Uh, the fifth is the Midway Benchmark 72, again over the mile. Uh, what have you done here? Yeah, look, this is uh, anything can happen here. I went looking for something in the market. I went for floating. Um, two starts back at Newcastle, came from the clouds and won uh, like a good horse and then stepped up to made into class one and wasn't disgraced um, in probably a race not all that suited in, uh, carrying 59 kilos. I think here, gate 11, it gets uh, dragged back uh, and can be finishing the hardest down the middle of the track. So I thought $11 wasn't a bad play here. Cool. I end up, uh, well, I think Srebrenko is going really well. He's tried really hard the last couple of starts and some, had some tough runs and not the best of luck. Uh, I like Zach Lude going on uh, with a bit of a claim and I think it will give you a nice sight. Timpanist was a nice resumption. Inside gate now should finish closer. It was too far back last time. And big, big jockey change for Scorched Earth. Was never in that four pillars race, um, but hit the line okay. And again, getting a better run here. Tommy Berry going on at double figures. I'll give it one more chance as well. But um, tricky business. The sixth is a benchmark 88, 1850. Uh, and I have ended up with, well, I like the resumption of Bonnie Ezra last time, picked off a lot of the field um, first up when I sort of had a bit of a feel for it off the trials. I think J-Mac goes on now. Inside gate will be further forward and it's going to run you a race here at uh, an each way price. Uh, from obviously Global Osbred's going to get complete control of this race. So I can see why it's favourite, but just going around a little bit there. And Pink Ivory down the bottom, back onto a dry track is, is the key there. It'll run well again. But um, I think Bonnie's ready to go, Beaver. Yeah, look, um, no, I went for Global Osbred uh, purely off the back of its two runs in this preparation yeah. behind Waterford and Villiana, who are both uh, fairly good horses. Uh, so I think it can run really well and may just control this race. I think, again, the step out in distance here suits and will handle it. I think you're right, Bonnie Ezra, um, certainly a progressive type uh, going back last preparation, uh, ran third a fourth in a group three race, uh, ran quite well and was well fancied in the market there, has some decent form. And um, for the exotics, Rondino, you can't rule it out. It was a good win last start. Yeah, yeah. The Quaddy kicks off with race seven, another mile race here, the Spring Stakes group three for three-year-olds. Uh, I think we see a nice horse here. Save a date for me. Has been mm. impressive both times. Comes to Comes to this race, which is essentially a, a midweek race. There's not a lot here. And um, I think it's going to run really well. From Redina back onto a try, is dry track, I think, is the key. I don't think we saw the best of it on the wetter tracks down south. Uh, and then the other wall of horses are chances here. So, But I thought um, pretty clear cut, three from four for me. Yeah, I've got save eight for me as well. Really liked its win last start. Um, stepped out of a maiden straight into a class two um, and won with ease. Uh, this looks like a, a ready-made race for it. Uh, I don't think the 10 gate is all that big a problem and it's uh, clear on top pick for me. Cool. The feature is the 1300 metre hunter for a million bucks. Good field. Beaver, who do you like here? It is a good, good, good field. Well, here falls. I'm interested to see if it gets a run because I think um, it may hold the key to this race. Um, so whether it starts in this or the next race, I think it's a, a massive chance. I'm not quite sure if it'll get the run here. Um, I narrowed it down to a couple. I thought Viliana can run better. Um, won really, really well first up and then um, wasn't the worst run in the world in a race won by I Wish I Win where it was almost last on the turn, uh, second last, and still run home nicely for, for eighth placing at Rose Hill over the 1,500, third up here. So... Um, on the basis of that, I'm going to have Vil Vilana on top. I think he can run well, certainly knock out horses where here are falls. And I thought Gravina could run well as well here. It's got the inside gate. Might just get the little cosy run. And if it gets the right uh, chance in the top of the straight, uh, could run well. Cool. Yeah, I, I treated Waihaha as a scratching here. I'd have to, yeah. it needs four out to be, to get a start. So I've got Vilana on top. 
summed it up well. Um, but it's just never in that race again. Too far back. Hit the line well. Get um a better run here. And uh, was brilliant first up. And um, I thought Bandersnatch, you can forgive last time, was stuck three mm. wide outside lead. Uh, just given none last time. Better run. It's $23 and will run well. 11-11 uh, coming back from the group one where it was okay. And ingratiating pulled up with an issue out of the Everest. And is against 30s. So I'll throw those into the, to the quaddy when we get there. Um, but pretty keen Villana is going to run well here. The ninth is a 1,300-metre benchmark 88 for everyone else. And Waihaha starts here, I'm assuming. Is that how you've, you've found him? Yeah, if it starts here, I think it wins his race. This is, um, yeah, it's a class above these. Gets the 1.5 kilo claim, so 61 and a half. It does have to give weight to some of these, but uh, I think it can run really well. Obviously, a close watch on Democracy Manifest. It continues to improve and um, has a good finish. And I also thought something like Jojo was a man was really good when last in work. I think it's uh, a horse that you can't leave out of your your multiples, but uh, Waihaha clearly on top here uh, for me. Yep, no, same for me. Um, was climbing over the back of him first up and, yeah, it'll win this race if it starts here. I, th I do think Jojo is the overs in the race and will give it a challenge. Uh, trials were fine coming here and will be the other one um, I'll throw into the quaddy when we get there. And we wrap up with a benchmark 78 again over the mile. We've got six mile races or something today. Um, tricky race, though. Who do you like? Yeah, tricky, tricky race here. Um, most of these could probably win this. Uh, really hard to get a form line. Uh, I settled on Syndicata uh, from the Wallace Stable. Uh, had the three runs in this preparation. Uh, was a really nice second last start. Finished off nicely. Uh, could have just as easily won that. Uh, gets, a, gets a few kilos off that run and can run really well at the $10. Uh, it's double the price of a horse that only just beat it last start. So um, if that form line stacks up, it can run well. I um, Yeah, I'm, I'm forgiving commanding's last start. Uh, got it on top. Yeah, the resumption was good and uh, had an issue last time. So I think we'll improve here. Notions gets control. We're all forward and um, be hard to get past. And I... I guess you've got to throw the import in just through the fact it doesn't have to be that good to win this race, but a uh, tricky way to finish the day. Newcastle Quaddy. Let's see what we've got here uh, on the Hunter day. We'll go first leg, two Robusto, three save a date for me, four Redina, 11 Starliner. There you go. Just for you, Beaver. Thanks, man. The Hunter will go five in the, uh, three, 11, 11, Six Valana, seven Ingratiating, eight Bandersnatch, 16 Gravina. Third leg, one Waihaha Falls, seven Titanium Power, and eight Jojo was a man. And we'll come home with eight Notions, nine Syndicato, 11 Adjourn, and 12 Commanding. Have you got a best in value at Newcastle? Yeah, my best bet comes up in race seven, number three. Save a date for me. And my value bet comes up in race five, number 11, floating. I've got the same. My best is race seven, number three, save a date for me. And I'll make my value, even though I didn't have it on top, I think Jojo was a man, his value around a $12 mark. Uh, on a card, I struggled to really find too much outside the market, race nine, number eight. We head to the Hawkesbury of the South, Cranbourne. <laughs> the next card here, not my track, but we'll see if we can find some winners on the way. The rail is in the three meter mark. It should be a good track. Uh, and we kick off with the two year olds again over the thousand. How are we starting the day here? Any thoughts yeah, on how look, the card looks, by the way? Yeah, pretty ordinary card, to be totally honest. Yeah. Um, but we'll find some winners for the punters, mate. That's what we do. Um, we say that we say they're ordinary cards and we're not confident, confident but uh, that's generally when we do pop up. So. Hopefully that's um, a good form line. Uh, coming into the first, I think the Cummings uh, three hold the hold the key here. I think one of them will be winning. Which one? Um, God only knows. But uh, the one I have got on top is Rusalin uh, with Oliver aboard. I thought it might just uh, have the edge here, the exceeding Excel Colt um, on top for me. I had the same. I, I just noted down, I think one of the Godolphin runners will win. Uh, Outside of them, if you're looking for something else at an each-way price, uh, Zasuko has trialled pretty well and 
John McArdle usually does all right with the two-year-olds, but uh, I, for the sake of numbers, four from nine for me. The second is the rest of these, the first half of this card actually looks pretty good favourite meeting. Uh, yep. The second is the Cranbourne Classic over the 2025, where I've got the favourite on top, Dunkel. Uh, chased well at Mooney Valley, uh, beat a few key rivals here pretty comfortably and just gets a lovely run here for Harry Coffey. Yeah, 100%. Uh, clear on top here. Uh, anywhere near that run and it, uh, it easily accounts for these. So with some natural improvement, I think $1.80 is not a bad price at the moment. The 2,050... 2,540-metre benchmark 84 is up next. Uh, why is Port Phillip $2.50? I don't cross know. The line, cross the line with the, the horse that ran third in the Melbourne Cup last start. Yep. And um, drops in great. This is an average race at best. And I think it, unless they're worried about a dry track, I think it's going to brain them. I think $2.50 yeah. is a great price. I thought two, yeah, can get better than that. Well, yeah. Cool. Yeah, 260, Take 270. It. Yep. Happy days. I'm with you. Get on. Um, I think it'll start favourite and uh, yeah, my own top selection. Beautiful. Race four is the. Uh, what have we got here? 1,200 metre race for the three-year-olds. Who do you like? Uh, horse I've been waiting to start again, Greece, who's been scratched a zillion times. Um, it's down here to run uh, tomorrow, and uh, if it starts, I'll be on. Yeah, me too. Think Should lead uh, and win. I think it's a nice horse. Gate one, gate. nice horse, eighty-five. Don't call all into Greece. There you go. Perfect. How easy is punting, eh? Maybe even Port uh, Phillip. Yeah, yeah. Race bang, five. Bang, bang. Lovely. Uh, race five, 1,400 metres for the girls. Might head to the bar after those favourites or win because not as keen here. Uh, don't like the race. Uh, I'm happy to forgive Savonia, actually. If you forgive last start, was going all right before that and it's 20 to one, but a, not a race I'm particularly keen to bet in. Paul's regret, next best, hit the line okay. But as I said, not a lot was jumping out of me here. Did you like anything? Oh, look. I've gone for she's all class purely because it's just way down in class. Yeah. Um, and it's formed this preparation. If you, if you take a close look, it's all been in last four starts have been in group two, group three races. So last start yeah. came from 12th on the turn. was only 2.8 lengths off Larkspur run at Flemington. Um, then prior to that had some really, had some really good runs, you know, um, I've just lost my form. Uh, ran third in the group two by behind Exolita where it led. Um, then it was behind, wasn't far off from five lengths Zapateo. So all of that form's pretty good um, for a race like this. If it's going to win another race, he certainly looks like it. And I thought around the, the $4.20, 430 mark is uh, good value in this race. Cool. Quaddy kicks off with the shooting star, class three where we see the de Australian debut of Braden Star, who, uh, yeah, towed around in two trials, looked pretty good doing so. Uh, and this comes to a midweek race. Uh, I think if it's got ability, I think it's going to be very hard to beat from Victory, Victory Bay, who bolted in on resumption, is going to run well again here. Uh, and there's not a lot else in this race, really. Uh, what do you make of these? Yeah, look, again, Braden Star looks hard to beat. It bolted in at its last start overseas, and this is a midweek race. I thought the main danger was Thaler, um, another overseas horse uh, that won well at Pakenham last start, jumped to the front and beat a pretty decent field. And um, I thought it was a really nice run and, you know, just kept, never looked in danger and just kept running hard to the line. So I certainly wouldn't be, leave, I'd be certainly saving on it. Cool. The feature is a listed Cranbon Cup over the mile. Uh, you probably know who I'm going to tip here, Beaver. So who are you tipping? I'm tipping Visanari. Um, I'm forgiving last start. Uh, I just didn't think it, that uh, the race went according to plan. It didn't settle. Um, got up on the on the bit a bit there, and just you know seemed to crab around um, Moody Valley there. I think it can run better here. I think it gets um, a better setup here um, in this field, and it's certainly down a bit on some of the class of some of those horses. So uh, Visanari to bounce back here. I'm with Uncle Bryn. I uh, got galloped on last week. Still hit the line pretty well in a, a better race. Uh, comes here, gets Mark Zara back on. Uh, Going to run well from Ironclad. He resumed really well over Cup Week on the back of some nice trials and uh, will run well here. Obviously, Visionary goes in the quaddy as well when we get to when you get to that. But uh, 
six from seven for me in the feature. The eighth is the Apache Cat Classic, uh, where I think the market's in the right order, but I was actually going to have a spec at number four. He's a bolter. Uh, back from Maidan, ran okay there, but uh, trolls have been good for this. I think it's just been forgotten by the market. It's nearly 20 to one, uh, and I think we'll run better than that. From Midwest, who's flying, it's obviously tied to scissor step. They can uh, fight fight out the finish as well, but um, just a little spec on he's a bolter for me, Beaver. Yeah, I did see he's a bolter into 20s that would present a bit of value, but his first up form is not good. Uh, mm. It's never one first up in three attempts. So I kind of thought you know, maybe, but Midwest looks like a really good horse. Um, one easy last start, uh, Caulfield uh, beating Scissor Step um, and meets that again here and runs before that were pretty good. Uh, given a good time off and resumes here, I think it can run really well um, in front of Scissor Step. I think it's not bad odds. And the last is a benchmark 70. How are you finishing today? Yeah, really, really, really interesting race here. Um, many, many chances. I was sort of struggling to get a line for, through a lot of these. Um, I've gone for Invincible Caviar if it starts here um, rather than tonight. Um, thought its first up run was good. Uh, probably goes forward here, takes up the lead and... Um, from the inside gate, might just be able to keep Aaron Bay wide uh, that's carrying the 60 kilos. Oh, I've gone with Aaron Bay. I think it's just a better horse than benchmark. 70 grade, I like all the form tied to Cardinal Gem and Jimmy the Bear. Uh, was competitive all through last prep with those horses and tops back to a benchmark 70 where I think has to run well. Uh, and I'm going to make the danger Kong, who's flying from over in Adelaide. Not that keen on Canberra Willow in town just yet but uh anyway it's 20 to 1. who have you yes, got in good. your in your quaddy yes my quaddy is the first leg race six i'm going number two victory bay number four thaler and number seven braden star in the second leg which is race seven i'm going number two just folk number six uncle Bryn. Number seven, Ironclad. Number nine, Visionari. And number eight, Crosshaven. In the third leg, race eight, I'm going number eight, Midwest. Number 10, I Am War. Number six, Scissor Step. And number five, Ranting. And to finish the day, I'm going number two, Aaron Bay. Number nine, Caesar. Number 13, Rich Divinity. And number 18, Invincible Caviar. Beautiful. Yeah, good pick with um, Rich Divinity. Didn't mention it, but we'll run well. Uh, excellent. You got a best in value for the punters at progetracing.com.au? Yes, my best is race four, number four, Greece. I thought it would be super hard to beat. And my value bet is race six, number four, Thaler. I think it can be hard to beat. It's sort of the best of the value of ones that I like. Beautiful. I'm going to make my best uh, the import. What is it? Braden Star, race six, number seven. And my value at race eight, number four, he's a bolter. Uh, and a, a Rich Divinity, another one there at double figures. Uh, failed to mention on the first run through. Good job, Beaver. What do you got in Queensland? Yeah, got a few up at Doombin here, mate. Uh, race five, number five, driver deal. Flying at the moment just keeps winning. Uh, so I think it can run super well. I've got race six, number two, Stroll. Race seven, number five, Manazi. Was absolute moral beaten last start. And race nine, number five, Orbison. Beautiful. Uh, good luck tomorrow, mate. Good job. You too. And good luck, punters. We will talk. Uh, we'll be back with our midweek show next Wednesday. Uh, take care and I'll see you then. Bye-bye. Enjoy the coast.